I know this might be a controversial uh, topic, Dave, but you know, I think in our games, I think the exploration pillar gets the least use. Well, Ted, it really is all how you choose to play the game. So what do you recommend? You ask the right questions and play the right character classes, you should be all set. Oh, that gives me a great idea. Why don't we do the all-class party ranger? Welcome to Nerdarchy, for nerds, by nerds. I'm Nerdarchist Dave, and as usual, I'm joined by this nerd. Nerdarchist Ted. You want to explore regular D&D content in your YouTube feed? Then you should range on over to that subscribe button. You won't have to hunt to find more Nerdarchy videos, as long as you ring that notification bell. All right, before we jump into our video, we might as well talk about our sponsor. And hey, if you're playing D&D and you're using minis, you're going to want the perfect mini for your character. And I feel like our sponsor, Hero Forge, can help you out with that. Absolutely, Hero Forge. And I've been a fan for a long time. I've got loads of Hero Forge minis, you know, here and, you know, they, they just recently released, you know, the access for everyone, not just those who are in the Kickstarter, for their color print tools so you can design and print your character, uh, your mini, right, you know, to be able to be used right at the table. No more worries about needing to, you know, go through the process of painting. I know, Dave, you're not a big fan, but, you know, now you can just go in, play with all the tools, design your dude, and it's shipped right to you completely table ready it's just amazing and if that's not all you know you've got to check out right now you know they're going on, on with their black friday deals you know check out all these amazing things that they have going on i know in years past i've gotten in on their black friday deals and added some amazing minis to my collection at affordable amazing prices there will be a link down in the description all right so let's talk about rangers and what does the ranger do all right, so the, the ranger, you know, we, we were talking about this, you know, off camera. You know, the, the ranger very much excels at, you know, combat and, and exploration. You know, th there's not a whole lot within their, their given class and subclasses to affect on the social pillar. Uh, but, like, they, they definitely excel. They're one of the best at exploration because that's, you know, what they're really designed for. Well, one of the other things we kind of established, too, is... Really, all the subclasses of Ranger, they just add more damage to the Ranger in different ways, right? Some are better than others. So really the Ranger, the only role they really fill is your damage and for, you know, your exploration. Now, they're a half caster. They get spells, so they can get some AoE from there. They can get some healing. They get a lot of utility. They get a lot of control effects, but the problem is they're a half caster. It takes them much longer to get to those spells and they have less spells to use. So, so while they do have some of those aspects, I can't really say they're particularly good at them. Yeah, it is, it is going to be difficult, you know, running this style of game for anything that would be, you know, very combat heavy. While they can shell out a lot of damage, they're not going to be good at taking it. You know, if you're going to play an all ranger party, you know, those things of putting on the, the heavier tankier type armor is actually not going to be feasible, not going to be usable because, you know, I would expect this kind of party to excel at, all right, we're going to do, you know, strikes. We're going to move in. We're going to move out, you know, not like, let's just lock down, you know, we draw the line, you know, no further. We, it, it is here. You know, none, none of that stuff. They're better skirmishers. Yes, that's the word I was looking Moving for. Moving around. <laughs> so we got five ranger subclasses. We get the Beastmaster, the Gloomstalker. We got the Horizon Walker, you got the Hunter, and you got the Monster Slayer. So like we said, you know, there's a couple things we, we're going to need to do to shore up some of those weaknesses. You know, anything that gives us more tankiness in the sense of, you know, either just being able to take more hits or avoiding hits, better armor class, Anything that gives us more skills that, you know, preferably skills where we can tap into the, you know, those charisma skills, the, the social pillar of the game or some of the knowledge skills would be good. Also, um, you know, anything that would add some more magic to this character, some more, you know, maybe area of effects or just versatility, you know, versatility, because while we like we said, our magic is already very broad as a ranger. We just don't have very much of it. 
Yeah, that, that's very true. So with our with our tankiness, uh, you know, if you go with the Hill Dwarf getting that extra hit point per hit die, the Half Orc and the Goliath both have the ability to shrug off damage. You know, you know, they each mitigate it in a different way, but it's it's definitely useful to just be like, nah, I'm not going to take all that. Yeah, shifters get the ability to shift, which is going to give them temporary hit points and other abilities, including one of those abilities being able to get a bump to your armor class. Warforged, bump to your armor class, also very useful. Now, when we're looking at, you know, charisma skills, there's a number of, of races that are going to give us access to either, you know, completely free choice or, you know, those ones specifically. You know, Changeling, Half-Elf, Kenku, and Vidalkin, as well as Human, you know, are, are all going to be some, some solid choices to get access to those things that, you know, we didn't really, you know, uh, you know that, that you wouldn't get access through through just uh, the class. So next up, we're looking at magic and actually see one on our list that isn't technically magic, but it fills the role, right? So we're going to we're going to lump it all in. Yeah. That. So we have the Azimar, Dragonborn and Genasi. Yes, we know Dragonborn don't cast spells, but they do have a breath weapon. So that gives gives them an area of effect and an energy attack. You know, you've got the Gith, uh, the Triton and the Yontai uh, pure blood. You know, all of these are, are giving you access to things that you might not have had uh, you know, access to elsewhere. But Ted, let us not forget the Tiefling. We also have the Tiefling. Yeah, that one as well. Well, also, depending on the variety of tiefling you go with, you know, you're going to swap and change out um, the options that you have. So there's that as well. So next up, we're going to take a look at our backgrounds. Uh, so for our backgrounds, we're, we're definitely looking for things that are going to shore up, you know, again, you know, skill selection. So you've got the acolyte, the charlatan, the criminal. Sage and urchin. All of these are going to be those skills that are, you know, either charisma based or knowledge based or access to maybe thieves tools uh, so that so that we're not, you know, catching traps to the face. You know, all, all of these are going to be very useful, but we're also going to cover knowledges that the ranger doesn't specifically get. So, you know, your arcana, your history, uh, you know, ranger is going to get nature, but, you know, it, you know, it's not not always, you know, the, the top pick. Uh, religion, you know, you can get from your acolyte, you know, so these are all great choices. Uh, and, you know, so spread them out amongst your, your rangers, you know, come from a diverse background, you know, perhaps, you know, you know, as a kid, you loved being in, lo in the library and you loved books and something changed and now you're a ranger instead, you know, have fun. Yeah. So from here, we're going to move on over to feats and see what kind of, uh, what kind of weaknesses we can sure up there. So we've kind of got these, you know, similar to our races, you know, divided up. Uh, you know, if we're looking at, you know, the, the, the damage, damage mitigation, you know, area, things that are going to give you extra hit points or, you know, more healing. So Inspiring Leader is going to give you access to temporary hit points. A healer is going to allow you to use your medicine kit to actually, you know, heal those that are injured. And, you know, Tough is just going to increase your maximum hit points. So all very useful, all helpful because, you know... As, you know, when we look at the ranger, their spell slots are limited. You're not going to have access to anyone who is a full caster. So healing is going to be rough. So next we're going to look at some spell casting, which we can get through Magic Initiate and Ritualist. You know, the, these are, you know, feats that I'm very fond of. You know, I was drawn to them right from the beginning of 5th edition. Uh, and, you know, if you take this character who, you know, happened to start off as a sage, you know, hey, I'm kind of a, you know, a book nerd, but at the same time, you know, I love nature. You know, this is going to fit that style of character. So perhaps you dabbled in magic, but, you know, you maybe you flunked out of being a wizard. Maybe you're not smart enough. Maybe you don't have the knack for it or didn't at the time. Uh, but, you know, you've brought some books along and you've begun studying and, you know, you've dabbled. You've learned a little bit. Getting access to cantrips is going to be helpful. Getting access to, you know, that first level spell is useful. But once you get into Ritualist, this is going to cover a lot of things. Um, you know, being able to detect magic, identify uh, Liamid's tiny hut. These are going to be incredibly useful throughout the, the course of a, of a long game. Uh, and, you know, it just kind of goes without saying, you know, that there's so many more things that are going to fall into that into that useful category. Yeah, for sure. Now we get to the part where we actually assemble the party and what we're going to use. So we're going to start off with a four-person party. 
All right, now I know that there's going to be some debates when we start getting into this one. Uh, so, you know, you're going to have to bear with us as we, you know, we had some own, you know, internal discussions because it's widely considered that the Beastmaster Ranger is the worst of the Rangers. But for our four-person party, they become a five-person party if you actually put a Beastmaster, you know, a Beastmaster Ranger in there because of that companion. So we've got Beastmaster, Gloomstalker, Horizon Walker, and Hunter. Yeah, you know, like Ted said, we're going to get an extra party member with the Beast. And honestly, we're just looking at it as a, as a pile of hit points. You know, it, it, you're going to you're going to start off with an extra 12 hit points and then it's going to go up from four each level after that. Uh, you know what? Those hit points are just, you know, something that the Beast can take instead of one of your party members in damage. And so we're going to look at that as a way of adding a little bit more tankiness into this party. So when we go to five, I mean, this is easy. You know, there's there's five subclasses. We're just going to go with one of each. Uh, you know, they all do damage in their own special way. They, they all have some fun and unique abilities. So we didn't feel there was, you know, there was worth pushing any off the table to have a duplicate of another. Uh, so we just wanted to, to, to go with that. Easy peasy. And for our sixth person, we're going to be double. We're going to double down on being controversial here. And go with two uh, Beastmasters, one Gloomstalker, a Horizon Walker, a Hunter, and a Monster Slayer. So, our, yeah, we're going to double up on that Beastmaster. So, again, you know, this this comes in, you know, with, uh, you know, being able to use it to, to, to scout, to use it as a, an extra, you know, damage soaker, if you will. Uh, they're not going to last super long in a high-level game, but there's nothing to say that this is a, a super high-level game to begin with. Uh, it, it's going to be fun, and, you know, both Dave and I have played Beastmaster Rangers, and I've had a lot of fun with them, uh, so, you know what, you know, who, who, who cares about the controversy, why don't you guys tell us down below, you know, how would you build these parties, why, why are we right, why are we wrong? But now the question is, now that we've assembled the All-Ranger party, how would we run an All-Ranger party, uh, All-Ranger game, adventuring uh, adventure, group of adventurers, whatever you want to call it. Let's dive into that. All right. So th this is this is one of my uh, most fun aspects of these videos. And I almost forgot about uh, uh, about it. I was ready to be like, all right, you know, you know, stay nerdy, all of that jazz. But no, this is the great part. This is the, you know, let's explore. So if the ranger is about, as I just said, exploring, uh, you know, this is where you know, you can go and explore new lands. You know, maybe the, the area that your, your world is in, for some reason, you've expanded into new, new territory. You know, you, this group of adventurers is on a boat and you are going to unknown territory. Uh, perhaps it's unsettled. Perhaps it's, you know, unclaimed. You know, you get to go and learn and see what's out there. You are not going to have any resources. You cannot go back to town. It is just you against whatever is out there. So be prepared. Bring everything with you that you are possibly going to need. You know, the boat will be back in nine months for your report. Good day, sir. Like, to me, like, that. that's that's the go-to. Let, let's go and learn. And, you know, you guys get to, you know, stalk and see what's out there. Record your notes. And, you know, you, you have that, that tension of you don't know what's around the next corner. You can't go back to town. Like, you know, the, the, just the, the, the types of character who, you know, lust and thirst for adventure, for unexplored territory. It's just all right there. Yeah, it definitely works. I mean, you're talking about doing all the things that the ranger does really well. I like the idea of taking, you know, taking the rangers or creating an order where, you know, each one of the subclasses is a different sect. And, you know, something's happened in the world and this, this organization has decided to do something about it. So they send a representative from each one of the sects in their or organization. Uh, maybe, maybe two, depending on how, what size your party is, right? Uh, but they're all involved and, you know, maybe there's a reason for all of them because let's face it, like all like so the hunter is our specialist when it comes to fighting. Uh, the, the gloom stalker is our specialist when it comes to Underdark and the horizon walker knows about the planes. 
Uh, and Monster Slayer, well, you know, they know about killing monsters, right? What if a portal opens up in the Underdark, all right? And monsters are kind of like pouring out from this other world and they have to send people in down to figure out what's going on. So, you know, the Gloomstalkers are a huge asset for, you know, exploring the Underdark and getting to this problem. But then you want the Horizon Walker, you know, in order to sense and track down the portal and know how portals work and all of that stuff. You know, your, your hunter, your, your hunter is there to just be the monster, be the, not to be the monster, but to be the killer. And your monster slayer is there because they know about the monsters that are pouring out of this rift, right? The beast master is there because the beasts add a great amount of utility to the party. They can be scouts. They have extra senses. Uh, sometimes they can fly or they're amphibious. So they do things that the other party members can't do. And so they can become assets in that way. So this party of rangers, you know, they're delving into the Underdark, trying to find this portal, shut it down and figure out where all these monsters are coming from. So I really like that idea as well. You know, it de definitely ties into every single one of those subclasses, uh, but is also very specific. Uh, so like my other, you know, more generic idea um, you know, kind of harkens back to, you know, my, my first campaign. Uh, you know, one of the things about, you know, ranging and, you know, being able to go out as a skirmish unit. Uh, what, what if your party is given, you know, this, this deadly mission, the, 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 the army of, you know, insert rival kingdom here is en route, whether it be monstrous humanoids or not. Uh, it is up to the five, you know, four, five, six of you, you know, to harry and harass, you know, the, the army. Do what you can unnoticed. You know, whether it's, you know, destruction of resources, uh, you know, you know, putting hindrances in their path to slow them down so that, you know, the, the town can fortify walls uh, or, you know, city can fortify walls, whatever, whatever the, the, the place is, but so they can be better prepared. You know, even adding you know, a couple of days to a couple of weeks to an army's march time, you know, greatly changes what can be done for, you know, the 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 place to prepare for a siege. And, you know, so these kind of things could be a lot of fun and totally falls right up the alley of, about what a group of rangers could do. You know, a lot of amazing skill checks, a lot of cool ideas that you could do, you know, you don't want that, you know, let's just stand there and fight against whatever it is because you're dealing with overwhelming odds and you're not good at mitigating those kinds of things. But if you're able to, you know, get in, strike, you know, remove resources, destroy things, you know, all of these things could, you know, be, you know, really amazing. Uh, and I think that sounds like a lot of fun as well. Yeah, a whole campaign full of guerrilla warfare, hit and run tactics, skirmishing, setting snares and traps. That's that's also an excellent way to use them. If you liked our All Ranger D and D party video, then you might want to check out this playlist that has all of our all party videos up here. And if you like, you know, more conversations about rangers, then you might want to come check us out and explore us over on Patreon. There you'll also find D&D &D content for DMs and players alike, weekly patron-only live chats, monthly giveaways that our patrons are automatically entered in, and more. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.